Yes guys, what's going on and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to episode number 22 of our Road to Glory career mode here on FIFA 22 with Hartlepool United. Hope you are all doing well and thank you as always for the support on the series and the channel up to this point. And we are starting off this episode with some really, really good news off the back of obviously the, the tough time we've had at the start of this season. We've got three of our main players back from injury. Two of them have been out since pretty much the start of the season. We've got Molyneux back, um, obviously he did come back in the last game. But he's back fully fit. And then the main the main sort of players coming back are Odessina and Steri are, are right back in our centre back. Both back from injury. They've both been out for a long, long time. So fingers crossed they can shore up our defence. And we do we only start one of them in this game. We do start Odessina in centre back for this game against Plymouth at home in the EFL trophy. Obviously you'll remember from the last episode we won our first game in the EFL trophy against Exeter with a really good three two victory after a wonderful goal by Hollahan to, to give us a win. And obviously going into this game, this is the final game of the three three team groups and uh, and it, as long as we sort of get a point at least and we should be guaranteed to go through but obviously we'll try and win this game and again playing with a team we know well we, we played them two games ago in the league where we did get a convincing 3-0 victory against them so fingers crossed we can do that again we have changed the team up as slightly obviously with it being a cup game as I say we've got to see the back of the team in sends back We've moved Rodney into striker ahead of Tyler Bury and we're also starting Mitchell as the goalkeeper just to give him some game time. But we did go to an early uh, early 1-0 deficit. The goal coming from Hardy after a really good cross by Grant. But we did manage to make the scores 1-0 pretty much straight away after that. It was a, it was a good cross from the left-hand side. Gray had the shot initially, but it was blocked. But it fell to Stevens, who just managed to curl it into that near post to bring the scores back to 1-0 and put us on level terms. But it was Plymouth who were, who were pressing us and they did manage to take the lead yet again through their striker Jeff Cott. Good shot to be fair but it was pretty much straight at Mitchell Mitchell should have had stronger hands, he should have saved that one but he, he manages to sort of block it but it loops up and just loops underneath the crossbar to go into the back of the net and across the line to give Plymouth that 2-1 lead so it's going to be difficult from, from here on in but we did get a chance here through the player that's playing through the middle as our striker Devante Rodney obviously usually playing on, uh, on the right wing for us but he's playing striker for us in this game and he did get a chance there but unfortunately did fire it wide and then it was Plymouth who managed to extend their lead 2-3-1 and it was Jeff Cott again. A good initial save from Mitchell there with, with the initial block from sort of point blank range but Jeff Cott was first to win the header and just looped it over Mitchell in our goal so unfortunately it was 3-1 to Plymouth now coming in sort of the last five minutes or so but we'll still keep pushing, you never know what could happen and we did get the an opportunity to at least cut the deficit here. Gray with the ball on the right, right hand side crosses it in and it is the youngster Akoyan who manages to just poke that ball into the back of the net to make the scores 3-2 and cut that deficit just for one goal. And into the 91st minute in added time, a coin looks to win the header, but unfortunately the Plymouth defender gets it. But a poor a poor header from a Plymouth defender there. The ball comes through from Rodney, and it is that man again, the youngster, a coin, who just steers it past the Plymouth goalkeeper to really turn this game on its head. So from 3-1 down in 83 minutes to finishing the game at 3 all, we can't ask much more than that. And a point, as I say, is enough to guarantee us progression into the next round of the EFL Trophy and uh, and make sure we do go through from a group. So really good, really good performance from there. Wasn't ideal up to sort of the 80th minute mark, but the resilience we showed and the strength we showed to pull back and get that draw is is really admirable and well done to the boys there. We come off back of that game, obviously, just from the availability of um, Francis Angle. Obviously, he got suspended in the game against Northampton previously, so he is now back from suspension. But we did manage to pick up another injury in that game against Plymouth and it wasn't such a crucial one this time. It was Featherstone. It's is, is a long-term injury, three-month injury with a broken toe. But he's not exactly in our first-team plans. He just played in that cup game against Plymouth to give him some game time. So we're not too disappointed with that one. But again, it does mean obviously our squad depth has gone down again. But we'll have to sort of deal with that as it comes. But we do, uh, we do go back into league action here against Wimbledon away from home. And we do start uh, the right-back, Jamie Sterry, in this game. Back from his long-term injury alongside Odessina. And obviously really good to see him back. But we did get off to a poor start with a goal for Wimbledon for Fisher to give them a 1-0 lead. And then we did have a chance of our own there. Tyler Bury, really good pass by Devante Rodney with that sort of little chip through ball. And it was Bury who had the chance first time, but unfortunately he did fire it wide. And then Wimbledon managed to come back just before half-time 
and get their second goal of the game and a second goal of the game for their striker, Fisher. So a comfortable lead for Wimbledon at this point and we hadn't really caused too many problems for them. We had that chance from Tyler Bury, but apart from that, we didn't really have any opportunities. But coming into second half, we obviously wanted to change it and we wanted to get some more opportunities and it was Rodney with some great feet down that right hand side. Plays into Bury, who looks like he can fire a shot away, but unfortunately, the defender manages to just get there and, and nick the ball away from Tyler Bury to put it out for a corner. The corner did come in, but unfortunately, again, it was Tyler Bury that he, he has another shot there, but he unfortunately his header just does just sail over the bar. So the scores did say it 2 0, but another chance here again is Tyler Bury cuts in onto his right foot, but unfortunately fires it straight over goalkeeper and it is saved to keep the scores at 2 0. And the cross from Rodney looks uh, looks to get to Tyler Bury, but unfortunately gets cleared out. So Bury having a handful of chances here and, and really good opportunities for him, but unfortunately he hasn't managed to put the ball in the back of the net just yet. And it was Wimbledon who were then looking to extend their lead there. A good a good shot by Frimpong, but saved by uh, Saved by Fraser Forster. He looked like he potentially let it slip into the back of the net. But he managed to just scramble back and clear it off the line. And then going into sort of the last 10 minutes, it was Bury again with his chance, but the goalkeeper saved it. The ball fell out to Shelton on the edge of a box and a long range shot from him, but unfortunately it wasn't quite powerful enough to beat the goalkeeper. And the scores did stay at 2 0, and that is how the game ended. But coming off the back of that game, we did have a couple of good messages from Bury and Sterry, both saying they're happy that we were playing. Disappointed, obviously, with the result, but happy to be back in the squad. And that's obviously good for us, obviously getting the morale of the team up as well. So hopefully we can take that into this third game against Accrington Stanley. Again at home um, and, and a good opportunity for us to get something out of this game. And it was a really good early opportunity, a good cross by Molyneux from the left-hand side. And it was Tyler Bury with the Scorpion kick that time. It nearly went into back when it nearly beat the goalkeeper. But fortunately for Accrington, the goalkeeper did manage to make the save. And then the worst thing happened only after seven minutes of the game. It was a shot from Hamilton that was saved by Fraser Forster. But lack of it, you'll see it here in the replay. He just he lost his head, wasn't anywhere near the ball, just, just slid in and took out the, the Atkinson attacker and it did give Atkinson the chance from a penalty spot to, to take the 1-0 lead. But fortunately for us, Fraser Forster makes the save, really good save from him. It wasn't the greatest penalty to be fair, it wasn't far in the corner or anything and Bishop, who's been on really good form it said before the game, will be, will be gutted that he didn't manage to put that one in the back of the net but nonetheless a really good save from Fraser Forster to keep the scores at 0-0 and from a goalkeeping point of view, definite a confidence booster for him to manage to make the penalty save so really good stuff from him but it was Accrington who were on top in this game O'Sullivan gets across in there and it's that that man again uh, Bishop who manages to get the header but fortunately for us it was a fairly weak header and, and a difficult angle for him and, and Fraser Forster made the save again but it was Accrington still pushing and again it's O'Sullivan who gets the chance but again it's Fraser Forster who's having an absolute blinding game out here who manages to make the save and, and deflect that one over over top of the bar and no danger from that one at all. So we did manage to, to sort of weather the storm in this game so far and we did manage to go into half time at 0-0 with the scores level but going into second half the, the script was still the same. It was still Accrington that was still on top. Bishop had the shot there but fortunately for us again it was saved by, uh, by Fraser Forster and then again Fraser Forster coming to our rescue there. It was Morgan who had the initial shot and then Butcher who had sort of a follow-up shot. But luckily for us, Fraser Force managed to save both of them. The scores did stay at 0-0. Then we finally got a chance of our own. Rodney, again, really good run from him. Threw on goal. And unfortunately, he just dragged it wide of the post. A good opportunity for him there, to be fair. He was through on goal. He had, he had time and space to, to pick his spot and get the shot away. But unfortunately, he did just put it wide. And the scores, again, did stay 0-0. And then again, it was another really good chance for man who scored uh, the goal for us, or the couple of goals for us late, uh, late in the last game. Um, or late in the first game, should I say, against Plymouth. A coin with a header. He's not exactly known for his heading. He manages to win the header, but unfortunately does put it to the left-hand side of the post. And the scores did stay at 0-0, which is how the game ended. So a goalless game, but nonetheless, really good game for a 0-0. Good chances for both teams. Accrington definitely deserved winning that one, but we'll definitely take the clean sheet and definitely take a point from that one. And then coming off the back of that, we had a couple of messages from Shelton. The initial one was a happy message. He said that he was happy to, to get the game time and, and happy with how he's performing. And then we did get another message from him a little bit after that, just saying the squad's unhappy, obviously, from the results so far. The squad's morale was down, etc. And that was obviously really poor for us to see. So hopefully we can pick that up. And, and we did get a little injury with uh, with Brandon Stevens with a five-day injury, but that won't be anything too major. But a really, really big error. Fraser Forster, obviously, we mentioned how much of a good game he had against Zacharyton in that last game. A really big error from him. He made the initial save, to be fair. From uh, from Gilby, and he manages to go and pick the ball up, and he put the ball down, looked to make the pass, but I don't know whether he just couldn't get his feet ready or couldn't get the pass pass away. He just got the ball got nicked basically, and Stockley just fired it into an empty net. So really poor from Fraser Forster, but um, he looks to make up for it there with a really good save. Um, 
from from Gilby again. Gilby and Stockley were absolutely on fire in this game. To be fair, though, both causing real opportunities for for Charlton and. and causing us real problems but Fraser Force will hopefully have as good a game as he did in the last game as I say he had that error um, to give away the first goal to give Charlton the lead but he's, he's making some good saves and making up for it here and another good save there from uh, from Stockley to, to keep the scores at 1-0 I mean, we did have a chance of our own 25 minutes into the game. Hollihan with some really good feet there and really good run from that centre midfield spot. He managed just cut inside onto his right foot and looked to just bend one into that far post, but unfortunately it did travel just wide of the post. And then we did get another opportunity here. Devante Rodney picking up the ball on the right-hand side of that six-yard box and fires it in past goalkeeper. Similar to the shot he had in the last game against Lacrington where he dragged it wide, but luckily for us it looks like he's been working on it in training and he steers that one into the bottom corner to bring the scores level and to bring the scores to one all. We knew how much of a difficult game Charles we're going to be some really good players Charlton have got and we knew how we knew how much of a tough game it was going to be especially away from home but we were looking to obviously hold our own and we did manage to get that equaliser through uh, through Rodney and then we did manage to actually take the lead in this game we mentioned again it was the Accrington game these boys must have been working on themselves in training because we mentioned at the end of the Accrington game that a coin's not great at heading and he had that opportunity that went wide but he manages to get a headed goal here a really good uh, run and cross by uh but Ogle down the, down the right-hand side who's coming for Sterry and uh, a really good cross from him and, and a really good... He, Coyne just sort of threw himself at the ball and he manages to, to get it past goalkeeper and we actually managed to take a surprising 2-1 lead against Charlton away from home but it wasn't going to last long and it was that boy again, Jaden Stockley, who manages to get his second goal of the game for Charlton. Bit of poor defending from us and we've mentioned it a few times before. It was Dunbar um, who, who had the ball there and he just couldn't sort his feet out and he did manage to give the ball away and it was Stockley who capitalised on that. So we did go into half-time at 2 all. But fortunately for us, coming early into the second half, we did manage to get a penalty. It was again the youngster at Coyne. He's playing so well at the minute. He's keeping uh, keeping Luke Molyneux, who we all know how much of a good season he had last season, Luke Molyneux, and, he, and the Coyne's keeping him out of the team. A good, really good run from him and, and the Charlton defender just slid in and took him out. It was a bit sketchy whether it was on the edge of a box or in the box, but we'll definitely take the opportunity we've got. And it is Tyler Bury who is going to step up for this penalty and look to restore our lead back to 3-2. He steps up, looks to fire it to the left-hand side, but unfortunately he crashes the ball against the post and couldn't give us the lead in this game. So the scores did stay at 2-2 and it's unfortunate for Bury. He hasn't had the greatest form so far in the last couple of games. He's, he's had a lot of opportunities and not scored a lot of goals and that won't do his confidence any good at all so fingers crossed he'll be able to get back and, and get get on the goal scoring sheets but that as I say that's not going to help him at all and the miss from a penalty spot proved even more costlier when uh, Charlton did manage to take the lead through Washington to give them a 3-2 lead but we came straight back and it was that man again Devante Rodney really good signing so far this season he's been for us and he managed he gets played through and manages to keep his call that time and just slotted past goalkeeper on the ground in the, on the goalkeeper's near post to bring the scores back level once again to 3 all. An absolute thriller in this game so far. Six goals so far. Both teams have had the lead. Both teams have given the lead away. And we've still got 25 minutes of this game left. And it is ourselves who get the first opportunity to take the lead again. It is the youngster Akoyan yet again who manages to, to make the run break clear of the defence and get the shot away but unfortunately his shooting wasn't quite good enough and it was the Charlton goalkeeper who managed to make the save and then Charlton came back a couple of minutes later it was the cross and right hand side and Washington the, goal, the player who scored their third goal gets the first time volley but unfortunately for Charlton smashes the ball wide of the post and then with about 10 or so minutes left it was Charlton who were really up in the pressure here Lakovic clears the ball off the line to make sure the scores did stay at 3 all. but Charlton weren't going to stop there Ball comes to Washington, he plays it through to Gilby, plays the cross into the middle of the box and forced to Kasky finds himself in space on the edge of a six-yard box just to head that ball into an empty net to restore Charlton's lead and to give them a 4-3 lead at this point with just about 10 or so minutes remaining. So we knew it was going to be a difficult task to get back and potentially get anything from this game, but... It, it was it was Charlton. We we thought they'd sit back and defend, but Charlton was still pressing us. It's Lakaviti. He just crumbles under pressure there, gives the ball away, gets absolutely robbed, and Stockley has a chance to get his hat trick. But fortunately for us, fires it straight at Fraser Forster, who stood strong and managed to keep the ball out back of the net. So it was a loss, a four three loss, but it was a really good game from a neutral perspective, and we got some good goals in that game as well. It was just the defensive side of things that went a bit wrong. And just off back of that game, twenty games into the season, now we do have a quick look at the table. We are currently sitting third bottom in the league, 22nd in the league, 3 wins, 6 draws and 11 losses, 
only 15 points, minus 10 goal difference, and three points from safety at this point. So make sure you obviously do keep up with this to see if we can escape this relegation battle. And as always, make sure you do like and comment on the video and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Take care of yourselves and bye-bye.